Online's Game of the Year Awards, the top 10 best games of 2011. Well, here we are. Nine games down, one to go. Only one game can take the spot of my pick for Game of the Year 2011. What will it be? Ladies and gentlemen, my pick for Game of the Year 2011 is... So, you know my name. Good. Because I know everything about you. Your darkest secret. Your ultimate weakness. I know you are Bruce Wayne. Batman Arkham City! Now, Batman Arkham Asylum was a fantastic game. I mean, it took the Batman license, and it made a solid game out of it. It was dark, it was gritty, it was interesting, the characters were spot on, the gameplay was great, the mechanics were just awesome, it was an overall fantastic experience. Now, when it was announced there was going to be a sequel to this game, everyone started thinking, well, what are they going to do now? I mean, the ending There's of the no game... It can't be in the asylum again. So what do they do? They made Batman Arkham City. Now Batman Arkham City takes place about half a year to a year after the events of Arkham Asylum. Now, Arkham Asylum was overrun by the prisoners at the end of that last game. So the mayor decides under the influence by Hugo Strange to section off a part of Gotham City and transfer all the criminals on Arkham Island to that part of the city and rename it Arkham City. Now, Joker has been fatally ill since the ending of Arkham Asylum. The after effects of the Titan drug used in that game has been killing him from the inside. So there's a bunch of side stories along. There's the Joker dying. There's the gang war between Mr. Freeze and the Penguin. There's Two-Face involved with Catwoman. There's Hugo Strange's Protocol 10, which is a mystery protocol which will be initiated within the next 10 hours of the game starting. There is a lot to the story of this game, and it is told fantastically. The environment of Arkham City is nailed perfectly. I mean, it's dark, it's gritty, the streets are riddled with criminals, there's crime going on everywhere, there's gang wars, there's super criminals, there's famous landmarks in Gotham City that are in Arkham City itself. The environment was nailed perfectly by Rocksteady. Great job. The characters. The characters are outstanding. Kevin Conroy reprising his role as Batman, and an amazing final performance from Mark Hamill's Joker. All the characters in this game are nailed perfectly. The Penguin, Mr. Freeze, Two-Face, Catwoman, Ra's al Ghul, they all, they're all interesting characters, and you really want to see what will happen to them. No other game in 2011 kept me as engaged as I was when I was playing Batman Arkham City. I was playing this for hours on end just to get to the next story point to see what would happen. And I'm not, there are some big spoilers, so I'm not going to mention what happens in the story, but it does take a pretty, uh, pretty unique turn in the story about maybe a quarter way through. The gameplay in Arkham City is tremendously revamped from Batman Arkham Asylum. Not that there was anything wrong with the gameplay of Arkham Asylum, it's just that in Arkham City, they revamped it, they retweaked it, it feels a lot smoother with the combat and the stealth. The stealth is awesome. The ste it makes you feel like Batman. That's what everyone says, but it's true. This game makes you feel like Batman. Along with the single player campaign, which will take you anywhere from roughly 10 to 14 hours, there are a total of 12 side missions in Arkham City that you can complete at any time during the game once they open up. These side missions are excellent. You will be on your way to the next story mission, and then something will pop up involving a side mission, and you'll get distracted and be like, Oh! I have to go do that! That looks interesting! Oh! Well, that's what I was like anyway, but the side missions really drill you in. You'll be on your way to the next story mission, and then you'll just notice something revolving a side mission, and you will stop everything you're doing, and you will go do that. And it is really rewarding. These side missions are fantastic. Aside from all that I just mentioned, the Riddler makes his return. 
Now, if you played Arkham Asylum, you'll know that across Arkham Island, the Riddler hid these little Riddler trophies and these riddles that you had to solve. And the more and more Riddler collectibles that you got, the more and more achievements you would get. Well, back then he played sort of a minor role in the whole thing. Now he plays a much more leading role as a villain. Right from the get-go, there are 400 different Riddler collectibles in the entire game. Yeah, that's kind of insane. If you And if you manage to collect all of the Riddler collectibles in the game in its entirety, you will actually be able to fight the Riddler. Because at the very beginning of the game, the Riddler gives you this machine. It's called the Enigma Machine. And basically, when you get enough Riddler collectibles, it will tell you to open up the Enigma Machine to solve a riddle. Now, you solve this riddle, and it will give you the location of a Riddler hostage. Now, these are people that Riddler has kidnapped and placed in these secret rooms across Arkham City. Now, you get to these rooms to save a hostage. It ends up being like a puzzle kind of platforming level where you have to solve different kinds of puzzles in order to let the hostage free. Now these are fantastic, and it really encouraged me to go back after I beat the game to grab all the Riddler collectibles I could get. Aside from all of that, there's also Challenge Mode, which returns from Arkham Asylum. Now in Challenge Mode, you have 12 different combat maps and predator maps. Now the combat maps are your standard beat em up. You're basically in a room full of guards or enemies, uh, yada yada and you have to beat the crap out of them, and there's four different rounds. Now, depending on how many points you get within a round, you will get a Riddler medal, and you can get up to three medals in each of the challenge maps. Now, the Predator maps are very different from the combat maps. You're in a small room with a bunch of guards, and you have to silently take them out like you would in the single player. Now, in the Predator maps, you have a certain number of challenges, like let's say, knock out a guard by using explosive gel on a breakable wall and then use a ground takedown to knock him out. Then you'll get another Riddler medal. Now this adds even more value to the game if it wasn't already enough, which just makes the overall experience and package that much more better. Batman Arkham City is the prime example of how to do a superhero game right. And I've heard everyone say, well, if Rocksteady can do Batman this good, could you imagine if they tried any other superheroes? Like, I hear people all the time say that they want Rocksteady to do a Superman game, which would be pretty awesome. They probably wouldn't fuck it up. But I think they're going to stick to Batman for now, and then ex after they do the third Batman game, they'll probably expand out to different superheroes. So Batman Arkham City, fantastic game, an excellent job by Rocksteady. I cannot wait to see if they do a third Batman game. It's going to probably be incredible, probably even better than Arkham City, which is going to be pretty hard to top. But I trust Rocksteady will do a fantastic job on whatever they'll bring next. And with that, that concludes my list of the top 10 games of 2011. Hopefully you stuck through through the entire video series, hopefully you respect my opinions, and I cannot wait to see what 2012 brings to the world of gaming. This is Simpsons2A9 signing out. Have a good 2012, guys.